Hey guys, and welcome back to some more Factorio, sending supporters to space. And I'm back in base here because, man, every damn time this autosave, it just knows when I'm gonna record. Um, I'm back in base here because I was messing with the production for our advanced nuclear stuff. I was considering uh, this episode converting the module thing to produce nuclear parts, but I kind of wanted to still do some modules, plus it's running low on iron, so I'm not sure how much it could do anyway. And then on top of that, I was looking here and the main base is actually doing a pretty good job supplying um, the production for these so I've just bumped up the numbers a bit because we will definitely need to expand stuff and I also have a total of four additional advanced nuclear reactors there's one in here and then this actually holds three um, so we have those four in addition to the I can never find this in addition to the four we have here which is actually uh, an immense amount of power when you uh, put like four more in a row like this and because in these ones in the middle get 300% bonus um, actually in this case it'd be these two and the two next to them and then there'd be two more on the end uh, and then this actually isn't even fully done uh, I need to I believe I would need to remath it again but I need to put I think another one of these over here and that's it for these four um, so this is actually like I said this is a ton of potential power uh, that we just need to build but what we're going to do today is we're going to mess with some more rails i hope you don't mind uh i mean you guys said you kind of want to see some rail stuff you know once in a while i did not build this out yet i've been i've been so swamped uh between the mad science thing and uh i also um some real life stuff uh over the holiday weekend uh, at least for me in the u.s uh, the fourth but, but yeah so what we're gonna do is I've been brainstorming what to do with tying these in. You guys left some really good suggestions. I was talking to uh, the design team and trying to figure out what the hell we're gonna do with uh, tying these in because almost any way I look at it, it's gonna be a bit of a mess. <laughs> um, and I think the decision I've come to based on thinking about it myself, talking to the design team, and then also your guys' suggestions, you had quite a few. Um, and I think what I'm going to go with, and this may seem really, like, weird or bad at first, but I think it's honestly going to be the best way, is to almost have, like I said, I was going to have a separate ore network, right? A train network, opposed to my other, like, my plate trains and my other production. But I think on top of that, I may actually have two separate ore networks. Um, meaning, one for copper and one for ore, or iron ore for the iron plate and iron ore for the uh, steel. Those two would share a network, I think. Um, but what I'm thinking, because of how these turn off and how this would work if I just did one solid mainline, um, it would be a bit of a mess. Uh, actually, more than a bit of a mess. It probably wouldn't work. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, I'm thinking we're going to do, obviously, four lane mainline, but we're going to have um, the ones for copper come from the west-ish or southwest um, because I've already explored down here. It's it's actually better for resources if you go mostly in one direction because um, you start hitting that uh, like richness by distance factor. Whereas if you explore just like the entire map in a square, um, it's actually not going to be quite as good. Um, so it, it would actually benefit us to go mostly in the south and a little bit west and maybe a little bit east. Um, so my thought here is since this is copper, copper would come up from, you know, again, this general direction, come up and tie in and the, the, the line would not proceed past, uh, here essentially, right? It would not be the same one as the iron. And then the iron would come from, uh, this general direction. And I know there's mixed patches down here. Uh, so we would have to do some interesting split offs and stuff to get to the patches without intermingling the lines. Um, but I think that's going to be easiest because, you know, then it's only copper, you know, copper is the only thing on this main line going this way. Um, and we do a four lane that actually leaves two lanes for input, right? Because you have two going one direction, two going the other. Um, so two for input and we may actually, I'm debating, um, cause I mentioned, uh, this was designed to have just one lane come in and split off to each stacker and the trains actually were distributing quite evenly, surprisingly. Um, I'm wondering though, if since we have two lanes of input, if we actually just want to give one lane to this side and one lane to this side, um, now that would require us to balance our outposts a bit more, which is a bit more micromanagey, which I'm not sure if I want to do or not. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if I have like one main line tying to here and then the other one tying to here, I have to make sure that my outposts and train amounts are kind of balanced, like in terms of tied in to each main line uh, section, because you know, it doesn't really do us much good if I have 30 trains going to this side and five trains going to this side because it's 
kind of completely unbalance the whole thing. So that was the advantage to the one lane entry and the trains sorting themselves out because they actually did a pretty good job and that requires like no micromanagement on my part. But anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to see what I can do. Um, we're going to go down here and kind of build some stuff out. Obviously all this would need to move, but um, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, this is the, the, the main problem, actually, the tie-ins would be easy. The main problem is how are these going to tie in because these are the exits um this one here and this one here and i can't think of any clean way to um have these tie back into the main line aside from doing something really really weird <laughs> i think well one of them's gonna have to cross which is gonna be a bit wonky so what we're gonna do is we're going to hop in the helicopter which i don't actually know where i've left it again <laughs> again uh I'm actually getting lost my own base. Isn't it like over here? Oh no, it's up here. I have these things like all over the base. Um, and we're gonna just mess with that because that's, I mean, that's really the main thing. You know, the building, the smelter, that just requires me to, I mean, I'm not gonna record that because you kind of saw it on the iron and it's uh, really not that interesting. So that's kind of an off-camera thing. And the rails are actually the main uh, kind of blocker for us now is we have to figure out how to tie those in. Um, once we've figured that out, then we can actually just kind of forge ahead really easily. Because um, the uh, the modules are, like I said, they're kind of running out of iron. And I have enough built up to finish the copper and steel smelter. So um, I'm just going to let this run until I have to build the steel smelter, which will be soon. And then we can just move this, tear it up, build the steel smelter, which shouldn't actually be too difficult. And then just once we figure out our tie-ins, that should be easy as well. So that's why figuring this out is kind of important to do now. Uh, because, you know, without that, we don't have any ore input. So we're going to fly down here. Now, I could test it with the iron, I suppose. I mean, it's going to be the same thing, really, in essence. Um, we need some landfill. We might need to fly down to this uh, stone outpost. There's a whole ton of landfill just sitting there. Uh, I know I converted this stone outpost to supply the main base, but it was a uh, landfill outpost. Oh, okay, that looked like iron. I was like, wait, <laughs> I thought there was a stone patch there. Um, stop. Halt. Okay, so we're just going to yoink as much. Oh, we actually had quite a bit of landfill. I'm just going to take quite a bit because I want to make sure I have enough. I just need to landfill the edge of the lake. We could actually just do this with the iron. I mean, we already have a main line there. I might actually want to move it closer. I'm not sure. Um, we'll have to see. Okay, well, you're going to build that. Great. Okay. Sure. Go for it. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the Mad Science series, and I uh, the feedback's been really good. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you don't mind the reduction in these episodes. Like I said, I'm definitely not quitting this by any means. Uh, I just have to reduce it a little bit simply due to my own time restraints like in real life and then also just you know uh, I don't really want to flood the channel with like four episodes a day of stuff some people would love that um, but I think the majority of people I mean a lot of people can't couldn't even keep up with like one a day of these so um, I'm just trying to uh, landfill this enough so we can actually bring this line down here but uh but yeah, so I'm not sure if I want this main line here. We'll have to see. Like I said, I wanted space for a uh, 3103 to fit, like between the main line and the stacker. And people had also mentioned like a pre-stacker for the stacker. And Hopewell and I had discussed that. The thing is, um, that kind of we feel like that can potentially throw off the trains actually distributing evenly here if they have to like go into a stacker and stop first. Um, and stuff, it may mess up the fat, like, them evenly distributing. Um, so I'm not really sure what to do there. Uh, let's go up here and build, actually, this one line out. See, now, this is, now, theoretically, now, I know we need a lot of trains in here, but theoretically, one line in should not actually be that much of a limiter on, I mean, it, it is a limiter on throughput, but, um, like... The trains shouldn't just be backing up on here, right? Because, I mean, this is the point of a stacker. Is the stacker is huge? Each side of this can hold like, I, I don't, I don't know, 30, 40 trains or something. 
I'm just throwing numbers out there at this point, <laughs> um, but a lot of trains, right? So these things should blast through. They should already have a path decided pretty much. And like I said, remember these stations turn off once there's three trains in here. So if there's three trains in here, the dude isn't even gonna try to path here. He's just gonna go somewhere that's open. So he should just blast through into the thing he needs. It's not like he's gonna like come here, stop, go up, stop, go up, stop, and go in. I mean, he should just come in, choose what side he wants. And when we tested it, this is how it worked. You know, they didn't stop like on this middle track and then move up a bit and then stop. They zip through this one lane, this one entry lane, chose a side obviously immediately, and then just zip through into the uh, stacker position that they wanted. Um, it, it, so it shouldn't be that bad. And like I said, we tested this with the stacker with the one lane input. Now, obviously, the only really the only difference was in our test. It was a creative. Well, that actually wouldn't make any difference. Um, the the only difference was we had these exit lines just tie back into here rather than coming off a main line. But that shouldn't have anything to do with the throughput of this because they were both tying into one lane still. Um, and it worked fine. We didn't have any throughput issues. So uh, I, I think this will be okay. Now, I don't know like if the distance at which I tie this in is going to make a difference if I maybe want it closer than that. Um, I feel like I might. Uh, although if I do it too close. Yeah, see, that's actually pushing it. I just turn as sharp as I can here. Uh, let's get rid of not that. Let's get rid of that one. Like, like I said, I don't know if that's going to be something we want or not. Does that look even to you? Guess so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so this is going to come down. Like I said, I do want a 3103 to fit in here. This should actually probably fit based on the spacing. We do need to tear up this a little bit because if we go with the plan I, I mentioned, um, I, aren't, aren't you supposed to, to tear up? Right, what? <laughs> oh, does it, it has curved as a separate thing. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so if we do it the way I had just discussed, yeah, we'll just get rid of all this. Um, it would not happen like this. Um, okay, so we are obviously still going to do right-hand drive um, for this because, I mean, that's what we've been doing. That's what this main line is for. So this would be a main line, um, which... You know, some signals are missing because I changed it all, but there you go. So this thing would come through here. And I guess, do I have stuff to test if a 3103 will fit here? Not really. Um, I think it would. Uh, we should be able, actually, we, we should be able to test this. If we just take a quick blueprint of, because uh, these signals are spaced-ish. I was going to say there's space for 3103s, but I don't think they actually are. Um, well, we know that this is space for a 3103 um, up here. So if we just take this um, from here out to like there, it's close enough at least. And we'll just use this as a measuring stick, essentially. Uh, something is missing construction bots. Probably the copper smelter. Uh, I feel like this is not going to be long enough, but we'll see. Uh, okay, so he's going to line up. Yeah, that's that's not... Uh, that's a, I mean, it's deceiving. It really is kind of deceiving, like, how, how far distance-wise that is. Where's my helicopter, man? Which means we'll need some more landfill. I do want to space this out because it's going to kind of affect how I do stuff. Um, space it out properly, I mean. Actually, don't even have to do the whole thing out to the right just enough for this main line to scooch down a little bit. And we're going to just throw a ton of these rails in here because we do not need them. And we're about to gain a whole bunch because we're going to tear up that this uh, main line here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, actually, I don't think there's any straight chain signals in here, but we'll do this anyway. Go bots, go! 
I love this build suit until it runs out of power. <laughs> Once it runs out of power, it's pretty much just a junky piece of metal because the bots just hover around me charging forever. Um, that's like when the picking up trick, like right now, actually helps. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take... Oh, never mind. I thought that was my measuring stick. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that a dude can fit. Let's just go up to here. Use that as our measuring stick. So that's kind of how much room we need, uh, which means it looks like I actually need to landfill even more, potentially. I mean, this, this whole, this uh, probably, like, down to here needs to be landfilled at some point, but that's stream work or off-camera work in general, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, so let's take this. Oh, that's a two-lane. It's not really what I want. Any more throughput than that. Uh, okay, so those go that direction, those go that direction. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's actually, that's good. Uh, we do want room for like a turn and stuff without interfering with that length. So what we're going to do is come down to like here. Shift click to kill the trees. And we'll extend it out that way just for a real, I mean, for all we know, this is actually where this is going to go. I mean... The iron smelters sure as hell aren't moving, so this may actually be, be uh, where I want this. And the iron, the steel smelters are going to be lined up um, bottom, like this one is. They're going to be a bit different. Like I said, the smelter part is a bit different, but it's still going to be the same system pretty much. So the main line being here shouldn't interfere, like mess that up, because like I said, it's going to be lined up um, from the bottom anyways. So it should be good there. And I mean, I guess I could have a separate ore line again for that, but that just is, I think that's pushing it. That would get really, really complicated really quick. Um, and I mean, this is almost kind of like a, a <laughs> I don't know, like a hear Xterm share his thoughts episode. I mean, we're not, we're, we're testing stuff, right? And I, and I am, I'm just trying to voice what I'm thinking as I think it. Um, and, and I'd love your feedback. And I think it's, I mean, I hope you find this, you know, interesting to kind of hear my thought process through this stuff, even if it probably makes no sense. Um, okay, so these two, my thought, right, is that if this is just for iron. If this were just for iron, this actually wouldn't even proceed past here. Um, well, this would need to tie in somehow, but the the lanes going from right to left wouldn't proceed pa uh, go past here. Yeah, so um, essentially both these lanes would tie into here. Now, how these would tie into here I don't know. Um, they would still have to cross each other. They wouldn't have to cross the other direction, which I think is the important part. Um, well, they wouldn't really have to cross each other necessarily, just, well, you'll see when I tie it in. I mean, there's, I, I don't know, like I could just do it. I was gonna say a T-junction, but you don't need one. I mean, this is, this is literally, um, if I could ever line this crap up, I'm so bad at this part. I mean, this is what it would be, right? I mean, there's no T-junction anything here. These ones, these are for the outbound trains going back to the outpost, right? These would never tie in. It's only going to be these two lines tying in. And I mean, this it looks like super simple. Like, I mean, I'm not even sure if I can signal this the way I did it. I think I can. Um, but I mean, that that that's what it is. Uh, now, like I said, the other option would be that like this lane turns off and just goes straight into the right side. And then this lane here, um, obviously, curves off, um, but they wouldn't merge. Uh, this one would curve off and go to the left. Like I said, my only concern with that is that um, you cannot rely on the trains to balance themselves, obviously, because you're forcing them to one side or the other based on their main line. So I would have to balance the outposts. Um, so like if I built, say, this outpost on the right side and this one on the left side, um, well, that's obviously unbalanced to begin with <laughs> due to the pack size, but um, let's just say this one mined out first, which he would in this case, I would have to find another outpost that I could then tie into the right side and make sure it has about the same amount of trains as all the ones on the left side. Um, and that amount of micromanagement along with everything else I'm gonna have to do, I'm not sure if that's something I really want. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm hoping that this uh, will work. I, I don't know. Um, what we do want, though, is we want a chain signal here. And the reason I do this is because, and we, 
we actually, I don't think we need a chain signal here because this chain, this should stop him here. And like I said, this wouldn't even proceed past this point. Um, in fact, this would literally just become the turn like that. Uh, same with this one, actually. So it's a little bit odd, actually, how this might work. Um, because like I said, these, uh, this would not be going to the copper if I'm doing it how I'm thinking. So these would just not, not go past here. Uh, so doing it this way is actually, uh, I mean, this is still fine because you want these before a merge. The reason I'm putting chain signals and I can actually put these probably here uh, is because, well, actually there's no crossing in, in this case. I actually don't even need that. The, I don't even need chain signals, I don't think, because I mean, a red signal, I mean, obviously if there's a train here, this is gonna be red and yeah, the train's gonna stop here. And then it'll just back up to that. I would have to space the signal out so this actually works properly, but then the other train would just be behind him. Now, my one concern with this is I don't know. I feel like there is potential for both these trains to want to move at once, right? So let's just say there's a train here. Both these are going to be red. And uh, let's actually just put a signal here because there would be one ish. Would there? Yeah, there would be actually. So these probably would want to be chain signals. Um, but now I'm a chain signals. All right, there we go. Um, so the, the thing is though, right, is once this guy moves past here, um, so let's just say there's another signal here. Once this guy moves past this, my concern is that both these guys are gonna to wanna to move at once. They both have a green signal and this looks like a crash waiting to happen. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to prevent that. I mean, I'm sure there's a very easy way. Like I said, I'm not that great at signaling. Um, but that's kind of what this would look like. And then, so then the concern is that this line, this exit line from the left-hand switcheroos would come down and he just ties straight into one of these, um, either this one or this one. But this one from the right-hand side would come down and he has to cross the input lanes, right? Because he needs to tie into one of these lanes and he has to cross one of these lanes to do that. Well, both these lanes actually to do that. And that's the one concern with this type of thing. I guess that would almost be unavoidable no matter how I do it. Uh, because, you know, that that's kind of, I mean, that's gonna mess up throughput quite a bit, I would imagine, for either the exiting trains or entry trains that this thing trying to cross them constantly. And there's not really any other way to do this uh, I mean, I could have this cross like here, maybe, and then like merge into here, but that seems like almost a worse situation. Um, like I said, I'm not really sure how to do that. The only other thing I can think of, and this is probably absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> is uh, to do some sort of custom mainline is not do this, which would kind of suck because I've already made this blueprint book for it um but due to how these switcheroos work is to have a custom one where uh well it could either be four lane but different than this or six lane let's just say we made it four lane still is um get rid of so just uh for demonstration purposes let's just say this lane didn't exist okay just imagine this lane was not here on the whole thing um is to have a custom blueprint or a custom rail design where we have these two lines, which are still as they are, they're still the input, um, and then have one going this direction from here, and this is where this exit line would tie into, right? He just come down, he doesn't cross anything because these don't proceed past here. He comes down, ties into this one, and then have another one instead of down here, and this is where it gets a little bit wonky and may just be dumb, or it may be great, I don't know, um, is have the other one one two three have the other one here have this one be one that heads out this direction so the same way as this but it's up here because then that's where this one ties in and it does not interfere with the input lines now of course you're gonna have to cross them at some point when you tie an outpost is the one thing with this uh you know because this comes down so let's just say we're going west or south this would come down so this guy would be on this side going top to bottom. Um, if you wanted to tie 
uh, both these in to like an outpost on the left, right? He would have to cross over the two input line or the two uh, you know lines where the full trains would be going to get over to the outpost, which is probably actually better than than crossing the input lines up here because um down there you know by an outpost crossing those these input lines down there isn't going to be as bad because it's only going to be crossing every once in a while and only for an amount of trains for whatever outpost you're crossing over to right if that makes sense whereas if i try to do it here literally every exiting train from this right hand side is going to be crossing every entry train that comes in um but when you do it like just going to an outpost like this it wouldn't really be that way um, necessarily or at least not as in a congested area so I almost feel like this would be a better system and it would be very easy to adapt um, I would just move these power poles to here because then this would be the middle lane or the middle section um, and then just build this like this one space of signals and it would be easy to adapt it's just, I don't know if that's like a really dumb idea. There may be issues with it I'm not considering. And this is where I'd like your feedback because you guys think of a ton of stuff that I don't think of. Um, like I said, my train and signaling knowledge, I will fully admit is not that great. So I could definitely be missing like some huge flaw with this idea. I feel like this, um, so to recap, before I end this episode, I feel like the system of having the iron ore separate from the copper is going to be the best logistically. Um, and then tying into a single line like this, I still think is better because there's no micromanagement. And, uh, like I said, the flow was pretty damn good when we tested it and it shouldn't be much of an issue. Um, but then I'd like to hear your thoughts on this idea of, of doing a main line like this rather than the standard like we have over here, because I feel like this would just be better because like I said, I mean, this one, you know, for this situation would tie in great. But then this one, if you do it on a standard main line like I had, he'd have to cross those two input lines to get over. And that is every single exiting train on the right hand side having to cross over every single full train trying to go this way. And that just seems like an utter disaster. There's like, I don't see how that could possibly work without major throughput issues. So doing it like this would mean that, I mean, they're still crossing, but it's more spread out and it's only like you know because you know it's only like maybe three trains to an outpost here another one train to an outpost farther down four trains to an outpost farther down um so it's not nearly as much crossing all in one area and stuff so i really feel like that's the best idea but i'd like your feedback so there you go guys um another kind of planning episode but we i mean like I said, this is important. Once we get this figured out, we are ready to rock and roll. I mean, once we get these tie-ins figured out, how we want to do that, then everything else should just fit together. Um, he's not line up. Oh, this is going to drive me nuts. Did he seriously not line up? This one looks higher than this one. Okay, maybe not. I don't know, man. I think I'm going crazy. That really looks higher. I copied this smelter though. Oh, that's weird. I think it's these throwing me off. Anyway, before I get too distracted, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you still enjoyed um, this planning type episode. Again, leave your comments, feedback down in the comments, um, or hit me up on Discord. And uh, if you did enjoy, feel free to leave your like. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.